DC Comics is about to do what many thought would never happen. They're releasing The Dark Knight 3, The Master Race, the third chapter of a story that began nearly 30 years ago with Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns. Miller has had a profound effect on the Batman franchise, so in honor of The Dark Knight 3, we're looking back at the seven ways Miller changed the Cape Crusader forever. By the mid-80s, most people thought of Batman as this. Though DC's comics had long since shifted away from the campy version of Batman seen on that show, it wasn't until The Dark Knight Returns that fans were reminded just how dark and brutal the hero could be. Inspired by the 1983 film Sudden Impact and his own advancing age, Miller conceived of an alternate DC universe where an older Bruce Wayne was compelled to don the costume once again and single-handedly save a decaying Gotham City. Readers were treated to a vision of Batman like no other, angry, tortured, and almost pathologically violent. The book brought Batman back to his roots, and it paved the way for Tim Burton's darker treatment of the Cape Crusader in 1989's Batman movie. What are you? I'm Batman. The DC universe is a pretty strange and wonderful place, but before The Dark Knight Returns, it was a place several steps removed from the real world. Miller grounded his alternate DCU in reality. His dilapidated Gotham City was much more like the New York City of the time. Dirty, crime-ridden, and harsh. Miller also drew heavily on the politics of the time. The Dark Knight Returns presented a world where Ronald Reagan was US president and Superman was the country's first line of defense in their ongoing conflict with the Soviet Union. Not every Batman story since has taken the same approach, but The Dark Knight Returns renewed the emphasis on Gotham being as much a character as the people who inhabit her streets. Miller's depiction of a dark, brooding Batman resonated not just with comic readers, but creators as well. The Dark Knight Returns, along with Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons' Watchmen, is largely credited with kicking off the so-called dark age of superhero comics. Suddenly, comic shops were full of books featuring grim and gritty anti-heroes, operating in worlds where the old rules of superhero comics didn't apply. During the late 80s and 90s, even Superman and Spider-Man found themselves getting darker. Miller followed up The Dark Knight Returns with Batman Year One, a story that offered a more grounded and realistic look at Batman's first year on the job. However, the most revolutionary element of this story didn't involve Batman at all, but rather Jim Gordon, whose troubled first year in Gotham got just as much attention as Batman's. It portrayed him as a character who also had a burning desire to save his city, and it made him a more integral player in Batman's world than ever before. Originally, Batman and Superman were always the best of friends, but in The Dark Knight Returns, the two heroes were former allies turned bitter enemies. Look, one of these days, someone with authority is gonna tell me to come stop you. And when that happens... I hereby issue a warrant for the Batman's arrest. When that happens, may the best man win. The climax of the series featured an armored Batman fighting a bloody battle against the Man of Steel in the streets of Gotham. That rivalry only grew more heated in Miller's later work like The Dark Knight Strikes Again and All-Star Batman and Robin. Not only has Miller's depiction of the Batman-Superman relationship influenced countless other comics, it's pretty much the basis of one of next year's biggest movies, Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice. Bruce Wayne dresses up as a bat and punches criminals, which isn't exactly a great example of sanity, a fact that Miller's Batman work increasingly reflected as the years passed. If the Batman in The Dark Knight Returns was dark and brooding, the Batman in The Dark Knight Strikes Again and All-Star Batman and Robin is practically psychopathic. In All-Star, Batman infamously introduces himself as the goddamn Batman to his new partner. That version of Batman would be more at home with the hard-boiled heroes and femme fatales of Miller's Sin City comics. Say what you will about Miller's characterization, there's no denying that the goddamn Batman has earned a place in the comic book pop culture lexicon. Perhaps the most important legacy of The Dark Knight Returns isn't that it gave us a darker Batman, but that it made Frank Miller a recognizable name. For many years, a majority of comic book readers only cared about the characters, not who was writing and drawing them. But thanks to his impactful work on Batman, Miller became one of the first superstars of the comics industry. Suddenly, readers sought out not just their favorite characters, but their favorite comic creators. Names like Frank Miller, Alan Moore, Jim Lee, and Todd McFarlane became just as lucrative as characters like Batman and Superman. That paved the way for the birth of the creator-driven image comics in the early 90s, and for Miller's own transition into creator-owned comics like Sin City and 300. Even within the Batman franchise, the creators building new stories are now as important as Batman himself. Every memorable Batman story of the past few decades has a name associated with it. 
whether it's Grant Morrison's epic Batman saga or Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo's current New 52 Batman run. Miller's work serves as a reminder that a character is only as strong as the creators who shape them. For more things on The Dark Knight, keep it here on IGN.